Good morning, everyone. What a joy it is to be here on this Sunday, whether online or in this place. We have so much to be thankful for. And as we go through this week, I just pray that all of us will take a moment and just think about all that God has given us. Let us stand together as we sing, He Has Made Me Glad. Good to see you as we gather in worship today. And again, we welcome those who are joining us online. It's a beautiful day. Good to be together on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. Uh, lots of things going on uh, here in the church today and throughout the week. We're going to, uh, as you tell, our worship committee, our worship council has got us uh, 
on the way towards Advent, which begins uh, next week. And uh, we're going to be decorating today. And uh, Kathy uh, McAdams asked me to share with you that uh, what we would like, we're doing this by, by groups and, and classes, uh, but following the service, if you could go in the upper atrium and help decorate the trees that are there. The trees are up. Uh, the balls are there. The lights are already on the tree. It's getting those balls hung and, and done. And just to entice you, they have brunch. So uh, there is food, and uh, uh, of course there's always coffee. So uh, all those things are in the upper atrium, and if you can go up and, and uh, spend uh, 10 or 15 minutes to help do that, it doesn't take very long at all, but makes such a big difference. And uh, they'll be up there to help guide and direct uh, what needs to be done. We'd appreciate you helping with that. If you brought canned or non-perishable goods for the Community Caring Center, that if you didn't come in the, the main entrance, uh, the carts and, and boxes and things, are there. We appreciate everybody who's done that. Uh, we'll be getting that over to them this week. Uh, today is uh, a celebration Sunday for our stewardship program. Uh, you should have uh, received a, a packet like this in the mail if the mail was good to you. Uh, I've, I've heard of some who haven't got it and some who have. So there are extras of these on the back table and they have the information about uh, what we've done in this past year, how the budget's divided up. There's a narrative and pictorial and line item and all that stuff in there. And then also included in that was uh, your estimate of giving for the coming year. And again, there are more of these just by themselves that are there on the back table. If you need one, you can get one. Uh, if you give a nod or raise a hand at Esther, she'll be glad to bring you one. And uh, we're going to dedicate those at the end of the service today. And uh, normally we just all come up and we put them on the chancel rail and pray. Uh, you can come and do that during the last song or you can just put them in the offering basket uh, there on the back table. Either way. And of course, if you want to do that online, you can do that in Realm. And if you have questions about that, please visit with Pat. But we appreciate uh, all the hard work. Finance uh, committees come up with a tentative budget for next year, but we never finalize it until after we get all of our uh, estimate of giving in because we, we put together a pretty realistic budget and we have operated in the black all year. Uh, not by a tremendous amount, but that's okay. We don't need to have a tremendous, we just want to be in the black. And uh, so we have done well, uh, finance committee's done well, everybody's been very faithful in their giving and we appreciate that very, very much. Uh, today is also the last day to order poinsettias for Advent. Uh, there are extras of those envelopes on the back table as well. And then, of course, this week, getting ready for our Thanksgiving meal. Ken and crew were up here. Uh, there he is. Oh, and this, I need to turn this way. Uh, Ken Lehman and crew were up here uh, yesterday and uh, doing a bunch of work, and they'll be up here every day this week uh, getting ready for Thursday. 750 meals is what we're anticipating this year, uh, mostly dining in and then uh, curbside uh, pickup and, and uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, we hope that you can uh, be a part of that in some way throughout the week. Uh, Ken needs some helpers uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, kind of help get the kitchen ready and, and get some things done. Then on Thursday, just need help all day long. If you can come for just a little bit, even a, an hour uh, or more, it'll make a big difference. And uh, I know Ken's uh, schedule is pretty open and he can plug you in where you have time to help. So uh, whatever, there's sign-up sheet still out in the atrium? Is your sign-up sheet in the atrium? <laughs> yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to be out there. He'll be out there. The living sign-up sheet is out there. <laughs> and uh, so you can visit with Ken and he will, he will get you connected with that. Uh, also, we were made aware that uh, Cook's Children's Hospital is needing aluminum crutches. Uh, they are in short supply right now. And if you've got a pair of those sitting in your garage or closet or attic, uh, we invite you to bring them up here to the church and we're gonna take those over to Cook's and uh, kind of help them out. Uh, apparently they had been on the news uh, a couple of days this past week and uh, we said, well, gosh, we can do that. And so if you've got some aluminum crutches and can bring those up, uh, we will get those over there to them. Uh, also coming up, looking just a little ahead, Monday, 
November 29th. Children's Council is doing a movie over at Texas Movie Bistro, uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog. You can visit with Alyssa, and she'll be glad to give you the information. It's meet over there, not come to the church and drive, but to meet over there. That's in Lake Worth, and uh, sounds like a wonderful day. 2.30 in the afternoon, no school on, on, uh, that, on Monday. And then the Women's Christmas Brunch coming up December 4th, 10 to 12. Uh, be more information in the uh, newsletter about that. It's been in the weekly update, but bring a dish to share. And uh, again, if you have some extra canned goods for the Community Caring Center, that's always helpful. And then lastly, just to remind you, if you have something the Lord's laid on your heart, we want to be able to lift that up in prayer. There are prayer cards in the pews you can fill out, drop in the offering basket. You can email or call myself or Ken Lehman, and we'll be glad to add those to the prayer list. Good to see you as we gather this day in worship. As we think of all the blessings God has given us, let us, we hope our lives will also bless God. So let us, as you are able, stand and let's sing together. 10,000 reasons.
With thankful hearts, let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Would you pray with me? Well, gracious God, we thank you and praise you for the gift and blessing of our time of worship this day, sharing together, lifting our hearts to you, knowing that you are the Lord of all of us. We praise you. And gracious Lord, in difficult times, we praise you. In times of need, we praise you. In times of joy, we praise you. You call us to lift our hearts to you each and every day, no matter what's going on in our lives or what's going on in our world. For we see with a narrower vision immediate events and perhaps a little ways into the future. But you see all of time at the same moment. From the beginning of creation to this moment until the moment that Christ returns. You see and know and understand and you move in ways that we don't always comprehend. But, oh, gracious Lord, we know that in all the things you do, you do because you love us, care for us, want the best for us. Want us to live and grow and thrive and discover all good things in life. And so, gracious Lord, on this day, we do say thank you. And we also say we trust your vision. We trust your purpose. We trust all that you've revealed to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For he taught us of you, and he taught us of life, and he taught us of the kingdom, and how it moves and, and lives in our midst, and how we are a very important part of what you are doing. Help us, O oh gracious God, to honor you in our service and words in this coming week, that all things may be to your glory. Hear this, our prayer. And hear us now as we join our hearts and voices together and pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I want to welcome all those joining us online. And I want to ask the kids to come up for children's time. Come on down. Come on down. Good morning. Y'all doing okay? Yeah. Okay, well, I brought something to show you today. I brought these hearts. Do you see the different colors? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I brought this today because our scripture reminds us what God does through our hearts. You see, the scripture tells us that God gives us his law and he puts it within our hearts. And when he does that, it gives us this, this covenant and this new beginning. Covenant's a lot like a promise. It's this, it's this ongoing relationship that God promises that we're going to have. And I want you guys to remember that, that through that, God tells us that no matter where we go, what we do, that God's going to be with us right here in our hearts, okay? Okay, so throughout the week, remember that. Remember that God's always with us right here in our hearts, okay? Okay, you want to pray with me? Yeah. Okay, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. Dear God. thank you for loving us. Thank you for the new beginning we find through you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Y'all want to go to Children's Church? Okay, let's go. As we sing, think what God has given us, let us sing together, give thanks. Yeah. 
scripture reading for today is the New Revised Standard Version of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, <coughs> though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall we teach, they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I have appreciated my chair, and it's right there. Because I know I can stand this morning for at least the first service, and I think the second. 11 o'clock, we're just going to wait and see, but it's here. So, uh, But it feels nice to stand again. I want to continue. We're going to wrap up our uh, current sermon series, The Challenge. Uh, we've looked at, uh, over the past several weeks, uh, how that has played out and, and looking at some foundational truths in uh, how we are challenged to learn, to live, to care, and this morning uh, to look at uh, the challenge to give, what it means to give of ourselves. Uh, there are many occasions in life where we might uh, find ourselves turning a, a new page or a new chapter or we see the creation of a dream that we've had. And if you've ever had one of those moments, you know how it feels. You're, you're just very excited. It's really, really wonderful. You just kind of have an emotional high, and you're just, you're just really pumped, and, and you think everybody else ought to be pumped, and you're just really, you're just so excited. And then every so often in the midst of that excitement, there's someone who wants to rain on your parade. They do something or say something in an attempt to deflate your joy. I think my favorite example of that comes from a Charlie Brown panel. Charlie Brown is, is with uh, his friend Lucy, and he's standing with her, and he's got his hands up, and he looks at her, and he says, these hands, these hands may someday accomplish great things. These are hands that may do marvelous work. They may build mighty bridges or heal the sick or hit home runs or write soul-stirring knowledge. These hands may someday change the course of human destiny. And Lucy looks at him and says, they've got jelly on them. You know, in, in addition to our, our dreams being dashed or someone raining our parade, perhaps there are times where it just seems like things are not coming together the way we thought those dreams were. Kind of like two mothers discussing their sons. They were both sophomores in college. One asked the other, what do you think your son in, intends to uh, do when he graduates from college? And she looked at her friend and she said, well, I'm not sure, but from the way his letters are going, I think he intends to be a professional fundraiser. <laughs> we, we have certain dreams of life and certain dreams for ourselves, and there's probably nothing that can lift the heart like the promise of a new beginning. I think that's just something that lightens our steps. It's, it's something that can change our mood, our temperament, our entire outlook. And I think that's the way God's people were when they went into the promised land and, and you know, go back and think of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the promise of a new beginning that was theirs. But the scripture reading from Jeremiah occurs at a very critical time because life had not been all they had hoped. 
Events for the nation had not been all that they had dreamed. Family life, personal life, national life had been tested over and over and over again. And the promises of God seemed distant and foreign. It was a covenant made with, you know, great, 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 however many greats, grandpa. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was a memory taught in, in history class because for the people of Israel, their covenant with God was no longer a living presence. It was no longer a living promise. And we have in this wonderful chapter, in these verses, Jeremiah telling the people of Israel, God's covenant is still valid. God's promises are still true, and living as the people of God is still a reality when you trust God and when you trust God for life. God has established a covenant. God has established a covenant with us because God made us a promise. He made a promise with Abraham, made a promise to Moses, made a new covenant with us in Jesus. And when we read through Scripture, one of, the, one of the things that I love to look for are all those little promises of God. Some are big promises, some are smaller promises. Some are very cherished promises that we lift up generation to generation. Like the promise to Noah to not destroy the earth and the rainbow in the sky. And the promise to Moses and the people of Israel, they were recipients of life recipients of a covenant. The many promises of Jesus. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. The wonderful promise Jesus shares with us that he has come that we would have full and abundant life. Promise of the Holy Spirit. The promise, I'll be with you always. And I think sometimes we, we claim those promises without really thinking about what they mean from our side of the promise. Because we're called to enter into those promises, enter into this covenant with our total being. And that means spiritual, socially, ethically. God gives us a new nature. It makes us a new creation, gives us a new spirit. And Jesus shares with us the kingdom of God lives within us. You know, like in the fourth chapter of Matthew when Jesus states that the kingdom of God is taking place in our midst and the very character and personality and essence of God is open to us, is revealed to us. Jesus tells us we're not just expected to do better in life or think better or look better. What we need is a change of heart. That's what Jeremiah is telling the people. They needed a change of heart and it had to be rooted in their relationship with God. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, said the Lord. I will put my law on their minds and I will write my law on their hearts. Faith is at the very core of our being. Faith is at the core of our existence. And our faith relationship is characterized by God who says, I will be their God and they will be my people. We're, we're in this living relationship with God. And that's what I love about how Jesus shows us this new covenant. I mean, we can know Jesus and he already knows us. We can talk to Jesus and he will listen. We can be concerned and whatever we're concerned about, he will answer those concerns. He will speak to us if we'll listen carefully. He is with us each and every day. and We become this new creation because God transforms us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think one of the things I appreciate in our ongoing relationship with God is God does that in the most wonderful ways. Not always large and major but daily and affirming. I love the story of a little boy came to his dad. And he said, Dad, Dad, the fish are biting down at the river and everybody's going, can I go fish? And he said, Son, you know what you're supposed to do this afternoon. You have to put out the butter beans. Ah, oh, yeah, Dad, but the fish are biting. I need to go fish. And his dad said, You put out the butter beans and you can fish as long as you want. Pretty good deal. And he didn't like it, but he went. So, you know, Dad said, just remember, put out the beans, two to a hill, just like we always do. 
And so the boy starts planting. The first row went pretty well, two beans to a hill, nice straight row. Second row, pretty good, not quite as straight, but two beans to a, to a hill. And then as he got done with that second row, he noticed his supply of beans was not diminishing very quickly. So you can probably guess what he did. He just dug one big hole, dumped all of the beans into it, and went off and fished. And you know what happened a couple of weeks later. His dad brought him to the garden. And he said, son, I want you to see something. Look at here. Little bean, little bean. Little bean, little bean. Little bean, little bean. Little bean, little bean. Whole lot of beans. And then he said, son, kneel down here. And they both got on their knees and he prayed. He said, Lord, I really don't care about a bucket of beans. But I thank you for teaching my son what he sows, he shall reap. God's writing a new covenant on our hearts. It's not just about the big things of life. I think it's how we live our faith in every moment of life. And it's not something you're going to print on paper. It's not something you're going to hang on the wall. It's a covenant that changes the very essence of who we are. We're getting ready to go into the season of Advent. One of the wonderful verses we'll hear is the people living in darkness have seen a great light and those standing in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. God is doing something new. God has established a covenant with us because it's God's nature to love what he has created. All of creation, all of us. That's why there's such an important difference between knowing about God and knowing God. Because everybody knows something about God. Surveys show that over and over and over again. But there's so much difference from knowing about God and then knowing God. Having relationship with Christ. Writer Herman Walk tells about a, a young man, David Goodkind. He said as a, a Jewish boy growing up in, in Russia, his family was... Uh, very orthodox Jewish. And they kept all the, the, the very proper food laws. They avoided pork and, and meat and milk were never served at the same meal. And his mother was very careful in, in running her kosher kitchen. And one day there was a rabbi that came over and his mother was preparing food. And he was very concerned that she was uh, cooking meat and warming soup. Uh, in, in, in pots, even though the same pot, even though she had cleaned them in between. And so he recommended she get another pot when she was going to make that kind of meal, and so she did. And another rabbi told her it was dangerous to dry two pots with the same dish towel after you cooked in them. And so she bought towels with a red stripe and towels with the blue stripe so she could keep her towels and dishes completely separate. And what says, by the time David went to the Jewish university, God had become a legalistic tyrant. And he raised the issue by saying, is God going to strike me dead because I used the wrong towel? That's the difference between knowing about God and knowing God. That's why a covenant with Jesus is written on our hearts. See, the, the love of Christ, when it's written in our hearts, can be lived. I think that's why the scribes and Pharisees were always so upset with Jesus. In Jesus, you could see the unmistakable love of God in his life, and that love was made manifest in powerful ways. And the scribes and Pharisees, for all their efforts and all their attempts, didn't know that love, not in the way that Jesus lived it. See, what's written in our hearts, that's important. Because what's written in your heart is going to determine how you live each and every day. There was a man tells of his days in high school, he said that I was a troublemaker. He said, I was one of those kids that spent a lot of time at the principal's office. And he said, the reason why was because my family life was a mess and I took out my frustration in the classroom, so I was sent down to the principal's office at least once a day, if not more often. Finally, because of my antisocial behavior, I was given work detail after school with the janitor. 
said the janitor's name was Eddie, and he was a short, stocky guy, and he spoke English with a heavy accent, and he worked quickly and demanded I do the same thing. And all the time, he kept peppering me with questions about my interests and ambitions. And this went on for the several weeks of my, my punishment. But he said when that time was ended, Ernie asked me if I was interested in a part-time job. He said, I couldn't believe anybody would offer me a part-time job. So I said, yes, right away. And Ernie told me the school board had authorized some extra money to help with cleaning. And he said, so every day after school for two hours, I worked with Ernie. And he talked to me as a friend. He complimented me on the things I did right. He helped me understand when I did something wrong. And he said, gradually I began to feel a whole lot better about myself. And the number of trips I took to the principal's office declined substantially. He said, I graduated at 18. I enlisted in the service. Ernie came down to the bus station. He had my final check. He gave it to me. He gave me a bear hug for good luck. And he said, I loved Ernie. He was awesome. But I didn't realize till many years later just how special he was. Because my part-time job was Ernie's invention, and he paid it out of his own meager salary. There were no extra funds from the school board. This stocky man with a big heart paid to help save a troubled kid. And he said it worked. See, what's written on your heart, that's important. It's seen in the matter, manner in which we live. And what's written in your heart is witnessed in your priorities, your passions, and your decisions. That's why God has established a covenant with us in Jesus Christ. That we in our lives, and our thoughts, and our words, and our actions can produce the nature of Christ's love. Because in how we give of ourselves, we show the living God within us. And as we follow the example of, of Jesus in the way that he lived and the way that he gave, we see the joy of that. And there should be joy in that. There should be joy in sharing our life and sharing our heart and, and sharing what's important to us, sharing our passions. We should have a giving nature and giving habits and a giving lifestyle where we give of the love of Christ. Because our lives touch many lives each and every day, each and every week, each and every year. And sometimes you don't know how. But when God looks with that larger vision, it weaves together in special ways. Some years ago in a, in a little town, they were doing some uh, work on one of the main sidewalks around their square and the old sidewalk was pretty bad shape. They tore it out and put in a nice, large, smooth sidewalk and decorated it up and added lots of extras. And they were going to have a little civic ceremony to celebrate the uncovering of it. Once they got the last bit of concrete laid, they would covered it up so that uh, it could cure properly. And, and uh, when they had the uncovering, for which most of the townspeople had turned out, the mayor stepped up to do the honors and he rolled up the covering and he exposed this new sidewalk. And it was absolutely quiet. Very strange silence over the crowd. And everybody without exception began to just smile. Because in the sidewalk from one end to the other were the tiny footprints of a barefoot toddler. Whether we realize it or not, we leave footprints with our lives. And whether we will it or not, wherever we go or whatever we do, we are always leaving footprints. Might be a tender word of kindness. Could be a thoughtless gesture of indifference. But each tiny act makes an imprint on the hearts we come in contact with. And a single, single loving act can grow forever as the crucial imprint in someone's life. 
That's why it's important how we live our faith. That's why it's important this covenant written on our hearts. Because for the most part, we're as unconscious as that toddler in the far-reaching impact that our lives have. You know, there's a lot of crazy things going on in our world. But I'd submit there's more good than there is crazy. We see a lot of acts of hate and anger. But I have no doubt that love is stronger. And there's more love than there is hate. Someone once said the future belongs to not those who have the facts, but those who have a vision. And the church of Jesus Christ is never short on vision. Because to be a Christian, to embody Christ, to have this new covenant written in our hearts is to say that in all the things we think and say and do, we are going to share the good news of Jesus Christ, God's love revealed to us in Jesus. And that is the challenge, to learn, to live, to care, and to give. To know that our lives make a difference. Today in worship, we dedicate estimates of giving. They're one footprint, but they're just one footprint among many. Everything we do touches other lives. May we be sure that we do them to the glory of God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, how we thank you and praise you for the blessing and gift of this day, this time, this worship. Lead us always in the ways of your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. As we join together in our closing song, I want to invite any who would come for prayer to come and join me. I also want to invite you, if you wish to bring your estimate, I'll get that later. If you wish to bring your estimate of giving forward and put it on the chancel rail, uh, you can, or again, you can leave it in the offering basket in the back or do it on round. But let us be in prayer as we uh, and, and joy as we sing and join our hearts together. Would you stand as you are able? Let us sing together. To God be the glory.
would you pray with me? Well, gracious God, how we thank you again for the blessing of this day and through all the many ways we may serve you. As we dedicate and bless our estimates of giving for the coming years, we think about the ways you've called us into ministry and service. We thank you for the opportunities that lay before us. Let all that we do, with hands and heart and words, be the ways in which your kingdom is known not only within us, but within the world around us. For we seek to serve you with the fullness of our being. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in the glory and wonder of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.